So we want to uh, pick your brain when it comes to uh, the law and some of the. Let's first of all let's let's talk about s some things that you would just like people to know flat out who are buying homes. They're in the process and they don't know about the the closing and that side of it what are some things that you would go law 101 home buying these are some things i want you to know bullet pointed uh the first thing would be to just don't jump into something you want to have your ducks in a row before you start so we get a lot of people that are trying to do private transactions that come in they're mm -hmm. not pre-approved they have no idea uh, what the market actually is looking like and it just causes a whole lot of trouble. So step one would be talk to a professional, get pre-approved. Ideally, go with a realtor as well. Mm -hmm. These private deals are just, a mess. They're a mess. They're they're difficult to borrow on. Usually, somebody's losing. It's usually either the buyer or the seller. But mm -hmm. generally, everybody somebody's not getting a good deal in there. So that would be your first thing. Second thing would be to just slow it down even when you go to make that offer. So people are going in at 100 miles an hour, really tight conditions. There's no time for lawyers to look at things. They're not doing inspections. Uh, they're not giving themselves enough time to get financing. And again, they're finding themselves in really difficult uh, positions. And the third thing would be just to listen to your lawyer, listen, listen to your mortgage broker, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, take the advice of the people that you're paying. Well, isn't the, but one of the challenges, as you're mentioning all of these things, is this market that we're in when inventory is very small. People are, in some cases, desperate to get an accepted offer. So this is the result, is it not? Well, yeah, it's a very competitive market. In this, in this last year and a half, I've never had so many deals in the whole time I've been practicing where there haven't been any conditions at all. So uh, there's like people no lawyer review, no, nothing. no lawyer review. Wow. Uh, so no opportunity for me to look at the property title or the agreement and say that it's OK. Uh, no time to get financing, even though they need financing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people are coming in. There's no financing condition. So I'm saying, oh, great. There's no mortgage cash deal. Oh, no, no. There's a mortgage. Uh, no inspection, which then we get the call a month later because something's there's gone sideways. Yeah. And a lot of that is because we have a lot of people coming from um, uh, Ontario and past Ontario. And those markets have been like that for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think there's those kinds of deals coming here. And now Nova Scotians are starting to compete in that same way. All of this is fine if you're comfortable with it. But at some point, I can't get you out of it. Mm -hmm. So you may find yourself in a deal that you can't complete. You said no inspection. Or is there any recourse if you waive that inspection? Is there any recourse if, in fact, you find out that you've got a termite-infested, leaky roof, uh, sewer-backed-up uh, house? It would always depend on an individual situation. So I, I would start by saying that. So, uh, But generally, uh, if you don't have an inspection and somebody's not giving you a disclosure, which is another thing that everybody's waiving. So mm -hmm. typically somebody would complete a disclosure document that says, I don't have termites and I, I don't have an oil spill. And Sometimes those things aren't, aren't filled out properly, though, are they? They're not. They're not. But there's something. But if, you, if you're closing a transaction with none of that, it's very much buyer beware. And buyer beware as is, is where is really as right? is where yeah. is buyer beware. So you you've taken it and you wear it unless you can somehow show actual fraud. And I don't know how you would if you didn't have any of that documentation. Yeah. All right. So how much of this is happening? Sounds like it's happening a lot based on what you're bringing this stuff up. It's happening a lot. Uh, it's happening a lot. It's slowing down a little bit the last few months. Uh, but I suspect I it's gonna. I, I suspect it's gonna go again mm. in the spring. Just it's just there's nothing for anybody to buy right now. And I think sometimes people are getting desperate. I don't know what you're seeing, Danielle, but like we have people that we have pre-approved that have made like 20 offers on properties. And you know, once you're at that 21st offer, it you know uh, unless you're completely exhausted and going to like kind of exit that process, you're kind of going all in. People are buying things that they don't even like mm. because they need somewhere to go. Either they're, uh, we've got a lot of people that are getting displaced because their uh, their rentals are being sold, or they've already sold their uh, they've existing already home. sold their existing home, uh, and they just have they have nowhere to go. So I've had clients in kind of questioning me, and saying, "Am I buying? Is this the three bedroom that we bought, or the four <laughs> the four bedroom that we they're bought? Like, Which one is this? Just <laughs> <get>, or, <laughs> or saying, I, I absolutely, I hate this house, but I think it'll be a good investment. And we had to go somewhere. Or I'm saying this house has terrible X Y Z." D are you sure that this is what you want to do? And they go, oh yeah, we have to buy. We have to buy something. So uh, there is uh, there is a lot more of that than I've ever is seen. There before. Some, is uh, buyer's remorse? I've heard that before with vehicles and other things. Is is there an opportunity for somebody to back out? Not 
not without a penalty. So a, a typical contract would have time for, uh, for financing mm-hmm. if you need it, for lawyer review, for inspection, all these good things. Once those timelines are up or if those timelines never existed, you yeah. have a firm contract. So you have a legally binding contract. You have to fulfill it. And if you don't, then there's legal consequences for Lose that. Lose your deposit. Not just your deposit. Uh, you're actually on the hook uh, for any of their carriage costs until they resell the property. And if they sell it at a loss, then you actually have to make up that loss as well. Wow. How so much it can be that significant, really? It can be yeah, huge. How much does that happen? It, it's, it, it does happen. You know, if I do a thousand deals, I might have ten that will fall apart, uh, sometimes at the 11th hour and sometimes, you know, fairly quickly, but after the, the deal is firm. Mm-hmm. It, it's really hard to quantify those losses for a client because, you know, you don't know what your seller's doing. Your seller might be also buying with that money. So it can really kind of go down the line fairly, fairly. The dominoes fairly. keep on falling. Oh, I've yeah. seen it. I've seen yeah. it. Like, Danielle, we've had deals together that our, everything was fine with our yeah. buyer, but the vendor couldn't get their act together, and then the dominoes keep on falling. Yeah, right. Because one may impact the next one, may impact the next one, and we don't really know, you know, what the full scope it may ever be. If you're lucky, you can buy your way out of it. If you're unlucky, you're not going to know for if a few you have years the money what the loss buy your is going to be. Out of it. Yeah, but yeah. it's not typically just your deposit. It's right. typically a whole lot right. more. So, but uh, for the most part, deals go pretty smoothly. Closing costs are there. Uh, realtors mortgage advisors give the people the right advice i would say for the most part things go pretty smooth right that's your run-of-the-mill deal yeah for, for the most part things things go pretty smooth uh th- these la- the, the last year and a half things have been very very busy so you know people kind of are their own worst enemy on this what they're doing really tight close conditions or they're closing i say all the time there's there's more than two days in a month, you know, everyone's trying to close on the 1st and the 15th, mm-hmm. and you would see that too, Clinton. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, sometimes... We can only do so much, really. This, this, at some point, you, you can't... Everybody can't close on the same day because the banks are slow, and, you know, you're, anyone you're boring for... I'm slow, the brokers are slow, everybody's slow because we've got 40 other people trying to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, everything's going to go smoothly as long as you get everything in to your broker or your mortgage specialist or your lawyer... Well, 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 how about getting those deals funded at the last minute? Sometimes lenders um, just don't fund the deal on the closing date. Does that happen? I would say that's rare. It's rare. If, I- I- if the file's completed, it, it funds. Yeah. I think the only time it doesn't fund, and I mean, Danielle, you can speak to this, is when maybe there's some conditions that are outstanding. And a lot of times that's uh, it goes back to the client not getting the information in to uh, their mortgage specialist, their broker, or to their lawyer. So we're waiting on things. So uh, the lender can't move as fast. You know, some lenders are slower than... Some take 10 days. Some lenders are slower than others, yeah. and you recognize that. And if, if you've got experienced professionals that know these lenders, they know their quirks. So I know if I have a certain lender, everything has to be in five days in advance. And if it's not, I'm going to have trouble. But I know who to call if I have trouble. So yeah. it's really it's just kind of... It's experience. Kinda, it's, know, it's knowing the lender. Now, I have a question. And I'm going to just jump in here. And I sure, want to ask it because I, I think our listeners may be intrigued. Uh, we've heard of stories in Ontario, and I think maybe also here in Nova Scotia, where developers will have an agreement with a buyer, but then suddenly, magically before closing even though there weren't any maybe adjustments, they want more money because of <laughs> what's happening with the supply chain, but also with the market. Have you seen some new construction kind of go sideways? And, you know, has there been any remedies or like what what advice do you have out there? So new construction, that, that was happening uh, up to even kind of before the summer, but it's kind of died down now. So I would say... About a year ago, we started getting we started getting these emails from uh, from the builders saying, "Well, our costs are way up, so now it's going to cost eighty thousand dollars more, and also it's not closing in July. Now it's going to close next July. Um, sorry, take it or leave it. You can have your deposit back." Uh, and of course, clients come and they say, "Well, this isn't fair." And I say, "Absolutely, it's it's not fair." And you know, they have a firm contract. The problem is, is there's there's generally no specific performance in real estate. So that means mm-hmm. you can't force someone to sell you that exact house. You can take them to court and you can say, okay, well, you should have done this contract and maybe you can get money and maybe you can't. That costs a whole lot of money. And at the end of the day, in the meantime, the house is probably worth $200,000 more and they were only asking for $80,000 more. So it was a really difficult conversation to have with clients and it was very much, you know... You're probably, do you want it or not want it? Do you really? want it or not? Where else are you going to go? You're, if you try to find the same house somewhere else, it's going to cost you $200,000 mm-hmm. more. 
And in a lot of those instances, we just kind of went back and negotiated with the builder and said, just show me where this breakdown is. And then magically, a lot of those costs went down a little bit. The bigger problem we've been having with builders is closing delays. And th that's really, right. none of this is on the builder. I mean, a lot of these instances, Why builder change? legit, they were going to lose money if they went. And, you know, we have builder call and say, I'm going to go bankrupt if I do these these if 10 properties at, the, at this price. Uh, and the closing delays is they can't get the supplies. It, you know, we've also had a lot with new home construction with builders switching things out. So you'll have a client call and say, I went to see my house has a whole new picture window. I didn't order it. And the builder says, well, the other one's going to take a year to come. Yeah. And I have the right to change that or, again, take it take it or leave it. And we've had a lot of take it or leave it kind of uh, Well, discussions. I think when the market's so hot, they can resell a lot of these homes again. And I think that's the challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head here a little bit, Danielle. I think some of these builders are having a very hard time financially because just think they made some of these contracts a year and two years ago yeah. and they weren't estimating for, you know, the lack of supply or the, you know, the increase in the cost. Yeah. And somebody needs to eat it. And I think in a lot of cases, the builder does eat it, but they can only eat so much. True. And, you know, some of it, the sum of it could be that they were trying to take advantage of a situation. Some that of it's too. probably both. Um, but there was somebody that was litigating. It was not anything out of my office. It's, it still hasn't gone anywhere as far as I'm aware. Uh, most people just kind of paid paid the difference if they could or took the deposit. And, 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 and I think, yeah, in maybe some cases it would be more costly to litigate than maybe the difference would well, be this sometimes is the, to this pay. Is, this is the problem and the, and the delays with it. And new home construction is really difficult right now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's good for a lot of people, but maybe not everybody. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, you can find me online at dcllaw.org, or you can call me at 902-404-3150. Did you have a good time with us today? I always have a good time with you guys. Always? We can't wait to have you back. We're going to have you back. Same time, same place like uh, 2022? Exactly. All right. Well, get it on the calendar now. <laughs> see, you in a, see you in a year. It's Daniel McLean, and it is DCL Law. We'll be right back.